Well, the first step with working with conics is that you need to actually identify the conic. When you look at this uh, standard form equation, there's a very simple way of identifying it. First of all, I notice I have a number in front of my y squared, which either tells me I have an ellipse or a hyperbola. But because the 9 is negative, it is definitely a hyperbola. So if there's ever a negative number in front of the x squared or the y squared, that's how you know it's a hyperbola. That's what you're going to do. So what you need to do is now complete the square. Now, we'll add this 45 to the other side because it's an extra piece. We don't really need it there. And so you'll have x squared minus y squared plus 36y equals 45. We can't complete the square with this because of the 9 that's in the very front. So what we're going to do is rewrite the problem, but we're going to pull this negative 9 out by factoring. Oh, my pen's not working. Okay. Inside you'll have y squared you'll have plus 4y over here 45 Okay. so once we cut this in half and square it we're gonna add 4 right here but because this is inside the quantity we're actually subtracting 36 because negative 9 times 4 is minus 36 so now we can't complete the square with this x squared because there's no other values of x, so we just leave it the way it is. We just say x squared. Then we have minus 9, y plus 2 squared after we factor, and this will equal 9. Now hyperbolas are like ellipses. You must, you must, you must make them equal to 1. So we're going to write that in so that we make sure we don't ever forget this rule. must equal 1. So that's where hyperbolas and ellipses are the same. Now when I say we must make it equal to 1, I'm actually telling you that you have to divide by whatever value you have to every single thing. That's going to allow you to get x squared over 9 minus the 9's cancel out, so then you'll have y plus 2 squared. Put it all over 1. And when you're graphing this conic, Having this one in the denominator will make it very easy, so we're going to leave it like that, even though it seems we shouldn't put it there, and then make it equal one. And this is how you put a hyperbola in a form after completing the square so you can graph it.